All right, here we are. We're going to go through 14.7 uh, extreme values in saddle points. A lot of this will relate back to uh, max minning and extreme values done back in calculus one, but let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, so as we can see here, we've got a nice figure of a certain function. And you, of course, can tell that there are, you know, uh, minimum values and maximum values that you can see this here uh, throughout the graph. So you can come down in these little valleys uh, right in here and get a minimum and come up here and find some maximum value and uh, everything like that within that range. So we'll have some local minimums and maximums. All right, so let's define this. Uh, if we let f of x, y be defined on a region R that contains the point a, b, then one, f of a, b is a local maximum value if the value of f of b is greater than all the other values f of x, y uh, for all points that are in an open disk centered uh, at a, b. Now notice it doesn't say anything about how large that disk has to be. Uh, it could be very small. So essentially it just has to be, what we're saying here is it has to be greater than all the points directly around it at the very least. All right, it doesn't mean you can make any size disk you want and have it be the maximum one because then uh, that would be more like an ex, you know, a, a global maximum rather than a local if you can do that. So, and then two, uh, same sort of thing, but if it's less than all the points uh, that are in a, a disk that are centered, that's centered at AB, if it's, if it's less than all those points, then it's a local minimum value. So one is gonna be like if we have a, like a peak point like this right here. The way I really like to think about it is when I have a local maximum here is I'm on like, you know, this is some sort of 3D graph. It's like I'm standing on the top of a hill and then any direction I try to go, forward, backwards, left, right, whatever direction I try to go, any direction I go, the very first step I take, I'm gonna be going and stepping downhill. For a local minimum, it's gonna be kind of the opposite. It's like I'm down in a hole and I'm at the very bottom of it. And then no matter what direction I step, I'm going to be stepping up and I'm going to be taking a step up to a higher value. So I'm stepping uphill. So I'm always headed uphill and here, whatever I do, I'm going to head downhill. All right, here you can see uh, this one called the roof surface. Uh, and you can see the equation for there and you can see that you have maximum values and inside this uh, this kind of square region, you have minimum values, you have minimum values down here, but then you have these maximum values uh, that are going across up here and over here like that. Um, and you can see that you have those there. So it's not just a single point that is a maximum, it can be like a, a line or a ridge or something like that that all has the same maximum. Uh, here, uh, here's a nice little picture of some local maximums and local minimums. Notice uh, for this one right here, uh, you know, you have to keep the disk small enough that it is that because if you make if you make your disk big enough, then you eventually, you know, you're coming out here and then you're including, say, points over on this part that are higher than that. So you can you basically can make that disk as small as you need to make it in order for it to work. Uh, so it could be, you know, something real small there. And then of course, right here, here's the disc going around that local minimum, uh, but it's just right there in that area. If you tried to move from it, you would either be going downhill from the maximums, no matter which direction you try to go or uphill from the local minimums, you'd be trying to travel uphill. Okay, theorem 10. So this is the first derivative test for local extreme values, very similar to what we would do uh, back for, uh, you know, back doing this in calculus one to find uh, the extremums on a graph. Uh, so if f of x, y has a local maximum or minimum value at an interior point a, b of its domain, and if the first partial derivatives exist there, then the partial derivative with respect to x at a, b equals zero and the partial derivative with respect to y of, uh, at a, b equals zero, all right? So essentially what that's gonna look like is something like this, where if you have a, an extreme value, a, a peak or a minimum, a low, this one, this picture is obviously maximum, 
then both the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y is going to be zero. And you can see that here in the red that right there, it's zero, and right here it's zero. And this is very obviously in the picture, this part is a maximum. So very much, uh, very much like what we had uh, way back in Cal one. All right, another definition here, an interior point of the domain of a function f of x, y, where both f of f are, sorry, where both the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with x with respect to y are zero, or where one or both partial derivatives, f with partial derivative with respect and partial derivative with respect to y do not exist uh, is called a critical point. All right, so again, kind of similar to what we had uh, before. All right, the next definition is for a saddle point. And so this is a differentiable function. Uh, and we have a saddle point at a critical point AB if in every open disk centered at AB, there are domain points where f of x, y uh, is greater than whatever f, a, b is and domain points where f of x, y uh, are less than f of b inside that, that disk, okay? The corresponding point a, b, f of a, b on the surface, uh, z equals f, y, f of x, y is called a saddle point on the surface. And so essentially we get a saddle point and we call it a saddle point because it kind of looks like a saddle where we're gonna have curvature going one way. I need to probably put a pen on here. We have curvature going like this in one direction and then like this in the other direction. You know, it's going to be kind of like that. It's going to curve over like that. And so in one direction, you know, if we start to draw a, a circle around on this, if I go this direction, sorry, if I go this direction from that point or this direction from that point, then it looks like it is a local minimum. But if I go this direction, I'm going downhill in that direction, I'm going down, then it looks like a local maximum. So there are some points that make it look like a minimum and some points that make it look like a maximum. And if that's the case, then you essentially have a saddle point. And, and again, really think of like a horse saddle. That's the shape uh, that we're talking about in that picture. All right. And there you can see some saddle points. Uh, you can see like this one's kind of hard to see because it's kind of blocking itself, but you can see here that it's curving this way right there. But if we were coming along right there, it's curving down, okay? So some points are higher and the same thing here. Here, I think it's a little easier to see. It's curving this way, this way, but it's curving that way going uh, perpendicular to that. So that way is going down this way along the so along the x-axis, it's curving down. Along the y-axis, uh, it's curving up. And so those are saddle points. So saddle point and then the saddle point there in the middle. All right. And I think I want to do an example here. So let's add a little page in. And what we're going to do is find the local extreme values. Example. Find local extreme values uh, of f of x, sorry, f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared like that. And so um, if we look at this, our domain here is everything, any x and any y values. So it's the entire plane of x, y values. There's nothing we can't uh, put on there. So we have no boundary points to worry about. Uh, and the partial derivatives, you can find those. So partial derivative with respect to x is just going to be 2x. And the partial derivative with respect to y is just going to be 2y. And they exist everywhere. There's no place that's not going to be true. Uh, so the only place we can have extreme values is where that equals zero, not necessarily on a boundary point because we cut the graph off at that point. So we can have uh, this equals zero and this equals zero. 
Okay, and so the only possible uh, solution for that uh, is the origin, where x equals zero, y equals zero, uh, and that's where we would have a a value. Uh, that's where we would have then our uh, our extreme value then at that point. Okay, and we'll work on in a little bit here how to tell if it's a maximum or a minimum. But here you can kind of see, uh, well, no, that's not that picture. But anyway, this one would look like, I mean, we, we should know what this graph looks like. It's a, if we have X, we have X, Y, Z like this. You should have a parabola in this direction and a parabola in this direction. And so it's gonna be, you know, that kind of a shape, like a bowl shape that just keeps going up you know, in, in each of these directions. So it's gonna be kind of a bowl shape there. And that's where we'll have our only extreme value there. All right, let's take a look at this one. Uh, the function for this one is x squared plus y squared minus four y plus nine. Uh, this is a paraboloid. So what we wanna find here, uh, it says that we have a local minimum at five, or sorry, of five at the point zero two. So if we wanna look at that and see that, we can go ahead and do the partial derivative with respect to x, and that's going to be 2x, and the partial derivative with respect to y, and that'll be 2y minus 4, just like that. And we can see that if we set those equal to 0, this tells us we need x equals 0. Uh, this, if we set it equal to 0, sorry, if we set this equal to 0, tells us that y equals two. And so you can see there that that is the point where we would have that. If we want to know what the actual value is, then we simply find f of zero, two, and you plug those numbers in and you'll find that it equals five there, okay? So pretty easy to find those, nothing too crazy there. All right, let's do, let's do another example I want to add in here. So for this one, we want to find the local extreme values, if there are any, okay? Find local extreme values of f of x, y equals y squared minus x squared. All right, and if you think about this picture, right, from where we've done this before, in the y, z plane, this is a parabola going like this, okay? Y, x, z, like that. It's a parabola going like that. But in the x, z plane, this is an inverted parabola going like this, okay? So we'll have, you know, some sort of, some sort of thing that looks kind of like this kind of a thing going on, okay? And actually would be a pretty good example of a nice little saddle point uh, going on there. So this would kind of curve up like that, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and try that one. And we'll see, uh, we should get this right at, you know, from our picture we can tell it's gonna be there. So let's take a look at what happens here. So fx is gonna be negative two x, Partial derivative of y is going to be 2y. Set them each equal to 0. This tells us x equals 0. This tells us y equals 0. Okay, so we have an extreme value there. Okay, and of course, it also from the picture is very obviously going to be a, uh, it's a, it's a local saddle point. Uh, so even though we have that, we have to, essentially what we're saying is, what I'm trying to say here is this looks like so far an extreme value, except this is very obviously a saddle point. So we need a way to differentiate uh, between extreme lo local maximums, local minimums, and saddle points. And that's where this will come in, okay? So suppose that f of x, y and its first and second der partial derivatives are continuous throughout a disk centered at a, b. Uh, and that 
the partial derivative with respect to x of a, b equals the partial derivative with respect to y of a, b equals zero. And now remember, just because the, the first partial derivative is zero doesn't mean the, the second partial derivative is necessarily zero. So uh, one, if f has a local maximum at a, b, and the second partial derivative of x, x is less than zero, and the product of both the second partial derivatives minus the partial derivative with respect to x and then the partial derivative with respect to y there squared, if that is greater than zero, uh, then you're gonna have a local maximum there, okay? Uh, for two, you're gonna have a local minimum if your, your second partial derivative with respect to x is greater than zero, and then if the product of your two second derivatives minus the product of your second derivatives but the mixed ones with the x and the y is greater than zero. Okay, that's going to be that. And then you're going to have a saddle point if, right, if you find that, you notice both of these were both greater than zero. So if it turns out that that part right there is less than zero, then you're going to end up with a saddle point. Okay, uh, I would try to draw out this for you, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to do it justice trying to draw out uh, why it is, whether or not that's the, whether or not this part here being greater than or less than a zero tells us whether or not it's a saddle point or a local maximum, but it has to do with uh, you go on and do the first derivative and it tells you what the slope is. And so you find that zero point and then you do that second derivative and it tells you whether or not, uh, you know, how your actual, like your tangent line there or tangent plane there is changing as you go across it. And then of course, if you have the X, Y one, it's, it's telling you how it's changing as you, as you, you know, get your, get your tangent in the X direction, but then vary it as you move in the Y direction. So I just don't even think I'm going to try and draw that, but anyway. And then the last thing is the test will actually be inconclusive if this little part right here ends up equaling zero. Okay, if that is the case, you got to come up with some other way uh, to figure out what that is. Now, this little thing here, this this uh, this expression here, uh, it actually has a name to it. Uh, it's called the discriminant. And you can actually get that uh, by doing the, uh, the determinant of this. So an easy way to remember this is to find that determinant right there. Okay, and that's called your discriminant value. And that'll tell you if it's a saddle point or if it's a potential local maximum or minimum, or it might tell you nothing if it does equal zero. Okay, that's your discriminant. And then here, let's throw an example in. All right, so this example, we wanna find the local extreme values again. So local extremes of f of x, y, equals x y minus x squared minus y squared minus 2x minus 2y plus 4. Okay, I don't even want to try and uh, try and draw that kind of thing out, but we can start to look for properties of the graph. So first we need our partial derivatives. So this one will be uh, so with respect to x, that'll be a y minus 2x minus 2, just like that. And we're going to set that equal to 0. And then with our partial derivative with respect to y, that's going to be x minus 2y minus 2, just like that. And then when we set those equal to 0, I mean, they're pretty much should have been an x here, sorry, I wrote a y. Uh, this will give us x equals negative two, and this will give us y equals negative two when we set that equal to zero. 
All right, so the point two, negative two, negative two, then is our only solution that makes that zero. So it's, so in other words, the point negative two, negative two is only possible extreme value. We don't know if it's an extreme value, but it's our only possible one. So to calculate uh, and try and find out what kind of an extreme value it is, we need the second partial derivative with respect to x. So uh, partial 2f partial x squared. And so uh, when we do that, we're taking the, uh, the partial derivative with respect to x of that again, and that's going to just end up being uh, what was that? That's going to end up being. It's going to be one minus two, and then hold on. I have something different on my other paper. I apologize for this little pause here. Oh, that's because I shouldn't have made that. I shouldn't have made that a y. What am I doing? That's a y. Okay, so anyway, sorry about that. That might explain why I had this different. I shouldn't have like, switched that a second ago, and I shouldn't have. So this is negative 2. It'll turn out to be uh, the second partial derivative with respect to y will also be a negative 2. And then the uh, partial x partial y will end up being... Uh, you know, just do the partial derivative of either one of those, and you're going to end up getting uh, just one. Okay. All right. And then we can find the discriminant. We can do that. Uh, we can do that. Uh, we can do that. Uh, that matrix and find the determinant of it, which turns out to be partial xx, uh, partial yy minus partial x, y squared, just like that. And so this will end up be negative two times negative two, and then minus one squared. So minus one squared, and that's just gonna equal four minus one, which is just a three. So uh, we find that our discriminant is actually greater than zero, which is you know, greater than zero. And so that's good. That means we can actually tell because we come back here, right? Greater than zero means it's either one of those situations. It's either a local maximum or a local minimum. And to know for sure, we need to look at this right here and decide if it's less than zero, it's a uh, maximum, if it's greater than zero, it's a minimum. And so we look here at this and we see, there we go, that is less than zero. So what we can say is this is less than zero and uh, the discriminant is greater than zero, therefore, uh, therefore, sorry, uh, our point of negative two, negative two is a local maximum, okay? Uh, and if we wanted to get the value at that point, we could plug it back in. I already did that, so I won't write it all out because I'm kind of running out of room here, but it's negative two, negative two, and it turns out to be uh, eight, okay? So there we go with that one. Uh, next, you can see here another picture here. This is a better one. This is that. This is that picture I tried to draw. Where was that? Right there. Y squared minus x squared. That saddle point. Uh, there it is. Right there. You can see um, it's a saddle point. You can also see the level curves. So if I'm standing right here and I look at the level curves, if I go to the right in the x direction here, which would be this direction up here, uh, I would be going downhill. So I'd be walking and stepping downhill. If I were to go in the positive y direction, I'd be going up, you know, one, two, three. And I can see that here. If I go in the positive y direction, I'm going uphill like that. Uh, so that is definitely a nice picture of a saddle point for you. Okay.
Uh, here, another picture where you can see a nice saddle point. They don't always have to look just like that, but again, depending on which directions you're going in, you're either going to be going uphill or downhill. And so if we look at this one right here, let's actually take this and uh, take a look at that function there. So that's another example right here. Uh, this function f of xy is 3y squared, and I'm going to go through this one pretty quickly, minus 2y cubed minus uh, 3x squared plus 6xy. That's that function from the previous slide. Um, if you do the partial x, if you do that out, uh, you'll find that at the point uh, that we're doing that, we can get a 2y squared. So with respect to x, that's going to be a negative 6x plus 6y. And then the partial with respect to y is going to be 6y minus 6y squared plus 6x. And again, you want to set that uh, equal to zero. And then you can kind of keep going through just like we did on the other one. And then when you do that discriminant out, you'll find uh, that you'll end up getting a value less than zero. So just go through, do the same sort of thing we were just doing. Find your second partial derivatives, fxx. Uh, so negative six and partial yy, it's going to be six minus 12y. And then partial xy is just going to be six just like that. So you can go through and just do those and do the same little steps we just did. Find that discriminant fxx, fyy minus fxy squared. And what you'll end up finding is that it's going to be less than zero. In fact, I did it out and I got negative 72 when I did it. So go ahead and give that one a try and see if that, uh, if that you know, works for you. Uh, here, another graph that you can see where you could find, you know, local minimums and local maximums there. So if you try that one out, you should be able to find those four points at least. Uh, on to here, uh, we can talk about critical points, things like that, those, these, these points where this matters and what the first and second derivatives are there for that last one and then what the discriminant is. Uh, here, nice picture. Uh, you can see that if we're looking at this picture right here, you can see all the points they labeled. So like this point, if this graph wasn't bound inside this triangle, right, it's bound inside this triangle region. So this, this triangle region right here is this triangle region right there. So if it wasn't bound inside of there, then we wouldn't have to worry about this. But this point is right on the edge of that triangle. And so therefore, that actually can be a, you know, can be an extreme value. So you have to start checking places like here and here and here. Uh, you have to check over, over here where it hits and over here where it hits. So you have to hit where it goes in and out. And also then the actual overall, you know, maximums and stuff like that where the, the partial derivative is zero. But they have dots in all the little places you'd have to check and see uh, for that, okay? And then you'd have to basically look for where the partial derivatives are zero solve those and then go back in and uh, go back in and check the points that are along the boundary of the shape that you're bound with it along that triangle. Okay. Uh, if anybody really wants to see that, you can let me know and I'll write it out on a page. But right now I don't want to keep this video going for too much longer. Uh, but I can write that out and show you at least how we find and, and, and you know kind of check something like that or do an example of this for you. Okay, just let me know. And then after that, um, in fact, actually, I'd do an example on this one is what I have worked out. So uh, just let me know if you want to see something like this, and I'll do it. Uh, but otherwise, there's a summary of the max-min tests. Uh, what you need to do for extreme values, that's everything we just learned all summed up. And so that's pretty much, pretty much it, okay? I uh, hope this made sense. If I went too fast in some places, go back, rewind, pause it think it through, watch it over and over again, ask me about it in class. All right, so that's all for now. Thanks.